Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. And before we begin today, I obviously didn't do a video or podcast yesterday just due to the horrific shooting here in Highland Park. I am not in Highland Park. I am in the Chicagoland area. Just my heart goes out to everybody in Highland Park that lost a loved one or had one that was seriously wounded or injured in some way, shape, or form. These things are obviously tragic and, and just given uh, you know where I live, it's obviously very close to home. I've spent a lot of time in Highland Park with friends and colleagues and clients and it's just a beautiful city so uh, my heart goes out I hope this is good quick speedy justice uh, you know for everybody and that everybody that was wounded does recover very quickly so with that let's dive into today because we're gonna be talking about Google and quite frankly Google is helping Russia's war effort and here's what's going on. This is actually coming from Craig Silverman of ProPublica. I'm going to be paraphrasing or quoting him quite a bit here. And he wrote a fantastic article. And I'm taking a chunk of this here. Some of the nuts and bolts of what's going on. And I think it's something that we all need to be aware of. And also put pressure on Google to basically change this practice given basically how wealthy they are. They don't need the revenue. Now here's what's going on. As of June 23rd, Google has been sharing potentially sensitive, as recently I should say as June 23rd, Google was sharing potentially sensitive user data uh, with a sanctioned Russian ad tech company owned by Russia's largest state bank. That is again, according to Craig Silverman in a new report out of ProPublica. Now, Google allowed RU Target or RU Target, RU Target, a Russian company that helps brands and agencies buy digital ads to access and store data about people browsing web websites and apps in Ukraine and other parts of the world, according to the digital analysis firm Adalinux. Now, Adalinux uh, identified close to 700 examples of RU Target receiving user data from Google after the company was added to a U.S. Treasury list of sanctioned entities on February 4th of this year, obviously as a result of the invasion of Ukraine. Now, the data sharing between Google and RU Target stopped four months later on June 23rd, the day that ProPublica actually contacted Google, meaning if ProPublica had not contacted them or another news organization, it would still be going on today. Now, RU Target, which operates under the name Segmento, is owned by Esper Bank. That's a Russian state bank that the Treasury describes as, quote, uniquely important, end quote, to the country's economy when it hit that lender with initial sanctions. Obviously, we've had escalating financial sanctions excuse me, against Russia since the start of this war, Esper Bank was one of those that got hit the hardest. Now, RU Target was later listed in an April 6th Treasury announcement that imposed full blocking sanctions on Esper Bank and other Russian entities and people. The sanctions mean that U.S. individuals and entities, such as Google, based in the United States, are not supposed to conduct business with RU Target or Esper Bank, its parent. Now, of particular concern, and this is interesting, the analysis showed that Google shared data with RU Target about users browsing websites in Ukraine, in the theater of conflict. This means that Google could have or may have turned over information such as unique mobile phone IDs, IP addresses, location information, details about users' interests and online activities, data that U.S. senators, quite frankly, and experts could say could be used by Russian military and intelligence to track people or zero in on locations uh, where they have people of interest. I actually talked about this yeah, in a previous video about Russia with the radar jamming and all that kind of stuff, how they essentially were able to uh, trick a general into making a cellular phone call, thinking he's calling back his mother to pinpoint him and then blow them up. So this is obviously a very, very huge thing. Now, last April, a bipartisan uh, group of U.S. senators sent a letter to Google, including Ron Wyden, uh, my favorite data privacy senator. Uh, he's a Democrat out of Oregon. He's always in these things. They sent a letter to Google and other major ad uh, uh, technology companies warning of the national security implications of data sharing as part of that digital ad buying process. Basically, the senator said that the user data, quote, would become a goldmine for foreign intelligence services that could exploit it to inform uh, and supercharge hacking, blackmail, and influence campaigns. Google's Google spokes, spokesperson, I can't speak today, Michael A.C. Ackerman, uh, said that the company blocked RU Target from using its ad products in March 
and that RU Target has not purchased ads directly via Google since then, meaning they might be using a straw man purchaser. Now, he acknowledged that the Russian company was still receiving and uh, basically ad buying data from Google before ProPublica uh, uh, basically alerted them as well as Adalytics. Now, Google's initial failure to fully enforce sanctions on RU Target highlights how money and data can flow through its market leading digital advertising systems with little oversight or accountability. Now, an April report from Adalytics also showed that Google had continued serving ads on Russian websites that had been on the Treasury sanction list for years, meaning Google's in violation of US federal policy that forbids them from doing that. Now in June, ProPublica um, also reported that Google helped place and uh, basically earn money from more than 100 million firearm ads, despite the company's strong public stance against accepting such ads as well. Google has a, a pretty much, for lack of a better term, an anti-gun stance, and they're making a ton of money off of gun ads through their system. Obviously, a little bit of a dichotomy there. Now, these findings about RU Target also come as Google and other tech companies face intense scrutiny from legislature about basically how they're handling all of our personal data. I've talked at length about Facebook on that one, but this is essentially how Google has been helping Russia in their war effort for Ukraine by giving over this intelligence they could possibly identify President Zelensky. Yeah, you know, or or you know members of parliament or military generals basically on their web browsing. This also really underscores just how integrated Google and Facebook and other massive tech platforms are in our life. Everything we do basically it looks like it Google can grab it or or has something to do with it. You got Google Maps, you know, on your phone, Google's got your location. Google's got an understanding of where you're going. If you're Googling something, they've got your unique ID. So whether you're Googling, I don't know, how to bake a cake or hemorrhoid cream, which would be pretty embarrassing, they know it all. And these are things that are really important, especially in a war zone, as let's say, you know, we're trying to establish connection securely and privately with members of parliament that should not be located via data that can they can simply be sold to you know a Russian advertising firm that can be turned over to the Russian government this is a huge problem and there you go so Google was helping and hopefully they no longer are Russia with its war effort in Ukraine and that's not cool and please like share follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP and please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well and as always stay safe stay online and please stay public thanks everyone